Greetings and salutations, I'm Turn Reviews. To state the obvious, I'll begin by saying that it has been a while since we last spoke to each other. Many of you thought I was dead, and on some level you'd be right. Well that's because my GTX 770 decided to drop dead on me after 8 years of service. Right as I was about to start making a new video, rest in peace, you shall be missed. Needless to say, getting a new GPU during this current state of affairs is not an idea I can currently entertain. Not to mention that I've been on the move, and have now found myself in a new realm that is eerily familiar. However, I do have good news. I borrowed my man's spare laptop. Don't worry, he won't be needing it. That being said, I should be able to recommence video production, despite my rather limited time these days. In this video, I'll be talking about one of my all-time favourite RTS games and its expansion. It's an underrated spin-off that has a rather unique setting, and I am unable to keep myself away. This game is something else. We've got WMDs in the form of chemical weapons, nuclear missiles, and orbital laser cannons. In addition, this game features suicide bombers, car bombs, human wave tactics, and Chinese hackers that will steal your enemy's retirement funds while they sit with their laptop and a comfy internet center located at the back of your base. If what I just mentioned has stimulated your interest, then I present to you Command and Conquer Generals, and its expansion Zero Hour. Released in 2003 by EA Pacific, which was during the invasion of Iraq and the earlier days of the War on Terror. It's very clear that the lead up to these events served as the inspiration for the game's universe. To help you make sense of things, I'm going to explain what's going on in this CNC spin-off universe. This game takes place in a world where China's geopolitical relevance matches the US. Both countries are engaged in a joint war against the decentralized Global Liberation Army that spans many regions but is mainly found in the Middle East and parts of Europe and Africa. They also have terror cells all over the globe. This is basically the war on terror, but it's against a singular terrorist organization that has the strength and cunning to resist two global superpowers plays the freedom-bringing United States. They bring to the table spy drones, air supremacy, lasers, and a range of high-quality infantry and armored vehicles. And that's not all. Most of Morocco's vehicles can be accompanied by a drone, which comes in three genders, the Hellfire, Battle, or Scout drone. When a vehicle with veteran status gets destroyed, a pilot ejects from the wreckage. If he survives, you can send him to one of your other vehicles, to transfer that experience to the new vehicle. And before I forget, snipers are insane. Put a couple of these guys inside a Humvee, and you've got yourself a mobile extermination machine. America enjoys the ability to change its battle plan by constructing the Armchair Strategy Center. That enables you to pick one of three buffs for your ground forces. Things like more damage, range, or health are what you can expect. These battle plans can be changed at any time. These are all interesting mechanics that only the US can enjoy. This is all well and good, but these fancy toys come at a cost. Most of your units are expensive. It's not a perfect world, but somebody has to keep the military industrial complex going. Oh, and your super weapon isn't really that good. You have to focus on a singular target, and if you accidentally deselect the laser, you can no longer direct it anywhere, working as intended. If you prefer to overwhelm your enemies with large numbers, then China is the faction for you. Battlemaster tanks and infantry get a horde buff that increases their fire rate when you gather enough units. Utilize propaganda towers to heal your units, and somehow repair inanimate objects. How exactly does this work? Well, it's an ancient Chinese secret. And if you love to relive Vietnam, China has MiGs, artillery, and flamethrower tanks that all use napalm, which can be upgraded to use black napalm for that extra crispiness. It helps bring out the flavor. Playing China is also a good way to increase your social credit score, and it's also a personal favorite of John Zena and Dwayne The Wok Johnson. It's a certified Bing chilling classic. Now get out there and make Xi Jinping proud. Unfortunately, China's air force is rather limited, as they only have access to a single aircraft, and their forces rely on numbers to be effective, whereas other factions could probably accomplish the same job with less units. The commando unit is also very niche, meaning it's useless outside of hacking and stealing money, as she has no offensive abilities. I guess she doesn't want to lower her social credit score or something. If you're not satisfied, then the GLA shall fill that void within your heart. Sneak attacks, suicide bombers, scud launchers, booby traps, and anthrax make up just a few of the GLA's tools. 
They're all about being everywhere and nowhere at the same time. Speed and affordability is the name of the game, and the GLA will use any means of achieving victory. Some people may shriek, call you a war criminal, mass murderer, or a terrorist. As any true warrior knows, victory wipes away dishonor, and by god am I going to turn the Geneva Convention into a Geneva suggestion, in Minecraft on my private server. The GLA is unique in that they employ angry mobs to do battle, which can be given AK-47s to do extra damage. AK-47s for everyone! What's even more interesting is that the GLA doesn't think twice about using slave labor. Where China and the US use bulldozers to construct buildings, the GLA uses a peasant with no shoes to build and gather resources. There's even an upgrade that provides him with new shoes so he can work even faster than before. He even reacts greatly for them. Thank you for the new shoes. Let it never be said that I am not a man of the people. Moreover, GLA vehicles can take salvage from destroyed vehicles to upgrade themselves a couple of times to improve their combat effectiveness. Furthermore, their buildings leave a hole behind once destroyed, which means that if the enemy fails to destroy that too, a worker can reconstruct that building for free. And that's not all. We don't need to worry about power, because the GLA doesn't use any. The GLA, because we care about the environment. Sadly, the GLA has no air force to speak of, and their units aren't exactly high tech. They rely on Toyota pickup trucks, motorbikes, buses, and old Soviet tech to get by. The GLA makes do with less, and that's a good thing. This is truly one of the most interesting and unique factions that I've ever played or seen in an RTS. The commando unit is pretty swell too. He's able to snipe the driver out of any vehicle, including tanks. Don't ask me how that's possible, because I have no idea. I absolutely have to talk about the voice lines. I'd go as far as to say that they're probably one of the best selling points of this game. Just take a listen to some of these. GLA Postal Service. China will grow larger. Hey, 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 be careful with your post, please. I'll build anywhere. Sorry, I can't build there. I'll make the sacrifice. Extra large. I love a crowd. Making a flyby. It's our turn. There's so many memorable lines and units that there just isn't enough time to showcase them all. The GLA probably has some of the best lines. Sure, all of these units may be caricatures of people, and that's why I love it. It's endearing and memorable, and does a great service at creating an unforgettable experience. It's a sad reality when you realise that this game would never be made in today's ultra-sensitive and sanitised environment. The fun doesn't stop there. The expansion, Zero Hour, goes a step further. We get nine whole sub-factions. Each faction focuses on a niche of the main faction. A great example is the China Infantry General. Their basic infantry gets transformed into a minigunner, they get a stronger helicopter, and their listening outpost becomes an attack outpost. And this is just a small taste of what gets changed. All these changes come at a cost. The Infantry General doesn't get access to tanks. Perhaps you dislike infantry. Well, this is just one sub-faction. If you like the US Air Force, you can play the Air Force General. If you like committing war crimes, you can play as the GLA Toxin General. There really is something for everyone. Thankfully, the game and its expansion let you play as all three factions. Most of the time, you'll be playing highly structured missions that require you to problem solve without the luxury of a base or unit production. You'll often be given goals to complete with a limited selection of units. It's only once you start getting near to the end of the campaign do you start getting access to the faction's complete arsenal. The expansion gives us five missions for each faction. It's pretty standard. As China, you purge the GLA from Europe due to the US pulling out from all of its obligations. At the end, China starts a Eurasian League since America's influence and power ends at its own borders. Despite being a game from 2003, it's still painfully relevant. In the beginning of the Chinese campaign, the GLA took control of an abandoned US military base in its stockpile. What's China's solution? Just fucking nuke them. This game goes from 0 to 11 in no time. In the final GLA level, you get access to all tech as you take over a Chinese and American base. At one stage in the US campaign, you get support from a US carrier group that you call upon to destroy any targets of choice. This mission made me realise how much of a missed opportunity naval combat was, as there is none outside of this mission. Had the option been there, I could have reenacted the Millennium Challenge 2002 war game. Only this time it wouldn't have been scripted. Oh well.
I'll end this section with one final note by saying that the main game's campaigns and the expansions are alike, in that you go around completing similar objectives. Hey moron, go here and destroy this, capture that, prevent this from being destroyed. There's only so much you can do with an RTS game, if you really think about it. Zero Hour introduces the Commander's Challenge Mode, where you select a faction and battle it out with the other generals until you get to the final opponent, Liang. She has access to a wide range of tech from the other factions. This is a great way to learn the strengths and weaknesses of each sub-faction. Just keep in mind you might have a tough time playing as the Infantry General against the Toxin General, as that's a pretty strong anti-infantry faction. Multiplayer is incredibly fun, especially with friends. No one wants to play with me, so in reality the game is purely single player. I'd recommend downloading and installing Gentle. It gives the game the ability to use high aspect ratios, and has a bunch of options that you can adjust too. For instance, you can adjust how far you can zoom out. I also installed the HD Command Bar mod. It's a simple mod that clears up the images for buildings and units. With all that said, you're probably wondering where to get the game. You can acquire Generals and Zero Hour by buying the Command and Conquer Ultimate Collection, which has all of the CNC games. Unfortunately, if you just want Generals, you're shit out of luck. If that doesn't sound any good, then you can befriend Shin Fei and his friends and acquire the game that way, all from the comfort of his internet center. Generals and Zero Hour are great games. It's a sad state of affairs when you consider that we will probably never see another worthy successor to the CNC series, and that Tiberium Twilight was the final nail in the coffin for the franchise. I did have some minor complaints like the Pathfinding being 2003 tier, and some of the single player missions being a little tedious, but really, I'm willing to look past them all because of how much enjoyment I've gained from this game over the many, many years. I'm going to take this opportunity to end this video here. I wish everyone a late Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and a Happy New Year. Now if you'll excuse me, I have to convince my friend to play Deus Ex. Defenses fall like toys before my armor. A warrior has fallen. A warrior has fallen. I have my nice mess. <laughs> I do not have patience for this. Okay, General, that's enough. I'm running out of nukes. Bombardment. I'm carrying the big gun. What are they, protesters? Hey, check out our new show message.